Hi folks, welcome back. Episode 3. By the way, just uh, so that you know, anytime you're dimensioning your stock, if you stop for any length of time, stand it on its edge like that. That way it gives off or absorbs moisture evenly. You lay it flat and you're going to end up with problems. It's going to absorb moisture or give it off unevenly and then you're going to end up with a warped board. So this is no guarantee, but it's your best bet. Okay, we're back to the scrub plane and initial flattening phase. This is the piece... <coughs> Remember, I kept, it, uh, I kept the two pieces together. It's easier to work one than try to work two separately. And the first thing we need to do is get this thing to sit flat. I'm going to take my uh, bench brush and just get rid of some of that stuff on there. Now, typically, I would have slightly cupped this way. So it's easier to get that cup side to sit flat first because if I had to do anything, I'm typically just going to be working on the two long edges. If you try to get the concave, the convex side to sit flat, you end up having to remove the entire middle section, which is a whole lot more work than it needs to be. So sitting that on there, okay, there is a little bit of movement. I'm saying good only because I wanted to be able to demonstrate this. I'd much rather have had it like the last piece where it didn't move at all. Okay, so I'm going to put the glasses on get serious. Got to discover what's causing that to rock. I want to make sure that there aren't any pieces like that cause creating it. Keep the bench nice and clean. Do all of this in the exact same spot that you're going to be doing the dimensioning so that you're not uh, you know, referencing over here and then coming over here and there may be a light variation in the bench and that'll throw you off. And the grain direction says I'm going to be planing that way so I'm going to hold it this way in this process. All right. Now I'm just pushing down corner to corner and I want to find where the pivot point is. So what I'm doing is I'm looking right along this edge, Frick, make sure you get that. And when I do that I can see that the board is moving along the entire length. So I know there's no high spots out there on that edge. Come around here Frick. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. And as you look along this edge and as I pivot like so, it moves all the way along except for right up here. So there's a little bit of a high spot right underneath here somewhere but it's also telling me that the main high spot is probably in an inch or two from the edge I'm gonna just tackle this first now I don't want to take off a whole lot of material so I'm gonna pull that blade in quite a bit from where it was I'll show you here as soon as I get it set exactly where I want it all right get a shot of that you can see the blade projection Yep. Okay, lock that down. So I'm going to just, uh, by the way, as I mentioned earlier, the advantage of a, uh, a true scrub plane is that you can get a full four finger grip on there. And I can use it one handed instead of having to dog it down each time. So working up against the bench dog, I'm just going to take off what seemed to be a bit of a high spot out here. Get rid of any of the debris. Okay. So, we're still high in this corner. What did I do? The opposite? I did the wrong one. That wasn't smart. Hope I didn't confuse you too much. Let's try that again. Okay, it's still moving. Now, I'm looking along this front edge. One over here, Frank. You're going to want to be right over here, over my right shoulder for most of this. I'm looking along here, I'm wiggling the board to see where the pivot point is, and I suspect it's somewhere right underneath here. So, take a little more off. Now, I'm actually going to pull that blade in just a little bit. Check, make sure there's no debris. Okay. I'm going to work this side for a minute. I see a high spot underneath here. If your bench is dirty, you can burnish the high spot. Now, I can see right there, and I'm going to circle that with a pencil so that you can see it as well. You can see a burnished spot right there. And that was probably the one, maybe even right there. I don't want to take more than one or two of these at a time. I'm just going to touch that. Okay, that seems pretty quiet that way, and when I move it this way, 
No, I still I have a I've got a high spot somewhere down here. Okay, this one's a little harder to find. When I wiggle corner to corner, we watch right along here and see where it's not moving. And it's up in here somewhere. I think it's right out here on the edge. A lot of trial and error. Okay, that, uh, that's not quite where I want it yet. I suspect somewhere in here, there's a high spot. Uh -huh. Hard to identify, so I'm just going to take a little bit out of the middle. <laughs> See what that does for me. Okay, this way it seems flat. This way I still have a little pivot somewhere. Maybe right underneath here. No, that might be it right there. Get rid of these pieces, it might otherwise create a high point. Okay. No movement. Well, actually there is. There's no movement this way, but there's a little bit here. Now here's the problem. If I were to go ahead and work on that, the fact that I can see that moving, I start using the plane, and as I get over here, the board flexes under the weight of the plane and then springs back up when I'm done. You'll never be able to get a flat surface. It's just always going to be chase that dog chasing its tail. So we've got to get rid of that. We've got to get that thing to sit perfectly still. Takes a bit of patience, I know, but what else have we got to do? Okay, we definitely have a high spot right here. Don't go too far. It's easier to chase this down in small increments than big ones. Okay, right up here in this end. There's a big burnish spot right there. You see that? Take that out. Okay. I think we can work with that. All right. Check the grain direction again. I'm going to go that way. Lock that in place. Make sure it's laying flat. Now, let's go back and do this again so that uh, you'll remember exactly how we're doing it. We want to take the center section, and these are the sides, so the piece we want is only three-eighths of an inch. So the first thing I'm going to do is locate the center, and three-eighths of an inch is going to be, so here's what we're looking at. That center piece is what I want. It's a little heavy, but that's all right. That'll give me close. So I'm going to take approximately a quarter of an inch off the top and a quarter of an inch off the bottom. I'll just use that as a rough gauge when it comes to using the scrub plane. Lock it down. Make sure it's sitting flat. Now I can ret I can uh, advance that blade because I got a fair bit of stock to remove. So there's where my setting is. You got that? Yep. Okay. All right. Again, nice straight grain lumber. So we can take full length passes with the grain. Not having to worry about tear it. We got a little bit right there, but it's not deep. I still skew that a little bit so that the body of the plane reads what's been done and what's going to be done. That prevents you from ending up hollowing it out. OK. 
Okay. See how we look. I like to eyeball it down here. Just kind of get some idea if I'm keeping it fairly flat. All right, pull the blade in a little bit. Take another quick look. Okay, this is not bad. Six feet or so. All right. Have a quick look. Still looks to be. I got a crate. A little bit of hole right here in the middle. On purpose. take four planes of that. I'm going to bring that blade out a fair bit. Wax the sole. First thing I want to do is just clean up the surface and get rid of the marks left from the scrub plane. All right, now all of those imperfections are gone, so I'm going to retract the blade even more. Now I'll work to perfecting the surface. So we can set the winding sticks on there and go through that exercise again. actually be able to do this with two passes. I always like to have a little bit of the blade hanging over the outside edge so that I know I'm not accidentally leaving a little high spot on that far edge. Pull the blade in a little bit more. Now I'll use a, the edge of the plane as a quick guide just to see how I'm doing side to side. And that doesn't look like I have, I see a little bit low right there. So I'm going to take a pass down the middle and step over to my left, step over to my right. Feel for any surface imperfections. We only need these on the one surface, the reference surface. Make sure there's no dirt or debris. Okay, that's pivoting. We've got to fix that. That's okay back here. So. Take a very light pass. Get rid of that bump in the middle. Pressure off. Get that dark background in place. Let's see how this is. Okay, whoa, way off. Have a look at that first. Nothing to be proud of. Definitely high in the far, in the back right corner and the front left corner. Can you see that? Yes, I can. Don't say it like it was that obvious. Uh, it was pretty obvious. All right, snug that up. Make sure that's laying flat. Now we've got to go corner to corner, get rid of that high spot. And that's those high corners. Work corner to corner. When it stops picking up a shaving, then you've got to move a little bit to the one side. Got to move a little bit to the other. 
Come back one at a corner. This is quite severe, so I'll do it a few times. I'm purposely avoiding this low corner in the back and this low corner in the front. Just working corner to corner on an angle, stepping over a little bit to one side, then the other. Back to the corner, one side, the other. Now I'll clean up the face and set this winding stick on there one more time to have a look. Pivoting here, it's something we don't want. Uh, back side's okay. Maybe a little bit of a bump right here. Actually, I can feel it with my finger. Down the middle. Do it a second time. Off to one side, off to the other. Let's see what that did. That's good. That's good. Take the pressure off. Backdrop in there. Okay, Frick, let's have a look. Ooh. I'm getting better. Still a little bit high on the top corner. That same back corner, but not bad. Not good enough to work with, but we're close. And want to make sure there's no debris. Sure that's sitting flat. Wax up that sole. Now, I don't think it's going to take more than maybe four passes corner to corner. That was two. That's three. Off to one side. Off to the other. Another one corner to corner. Off to one side. Off to the other. Now go full length. Pull the blade in even more. Let's check that. High spot. Down through the middle. Not picking up anything on that second pass, so then we'll go off to one side and then the other. And hopefully, oops, there's a, we can get rid of this. That's good. That's good too. Take the pressure off every time. In other words, you don't know if you're distorting it. Oh shoot, we went a little bit the other way. Have a look at that. <laughs> I'm being fussy because I want it to be perfect. And this is where it starts. So we either do it right at this phase and then everything else falls into place or we allow something like this to slide and then we fight it through the entire process. You end up cutting the joint, put it together and it does it racks corner to corner all because you let it go at this stage. So take the time to make sure you're starting with properly milled stock that's flat, smooth and square. All right, we get rid of those high corners. Maybe just two passes. Step off to one side. The other, go full length. See how the winding sticks sit. Pivoting, we got a high spot. Track the blade a little bit more. Check the winding sticks again. Still got a high spot. When I do this, you notice that I send the plane right down the middle. I don't have it skewed at all. I want to take out that bump that's being created. Make sure there's no debris in the bottom. close. See if you can spot that. You look at it through the camera and tell me if you can tell whether or not one corner is higher than the other. You Looks like it? the right one is a little bit higher. Yeah. yeah. Good. Just checking your camera. So a little bit high in that back corner. 
think that's back to where we were the first time. All it should take. We got that bump. That's not bad. Use that to the pressure off. The backdrop in. I'm not even going to have you look at that. Believe it or not, we went just a little bit too far on the other side. We can spot less than a thousandth of an inch with those winding sticks. Pressure off. Oh, it's really close. Really close. Still high in this back corner. Hate to do a whole episode on one board. Must be the weather. Nothing on the bottom of those winding sticks. Now, where is that bump? Will this be it? There, finally. Holy smokes. Take a look at that so they can see. Give me the nod. Okay? Yeah, it's good. All right. I might burn these winding sticks. All right. Now we'll go in, get one edge done. Long shooting board on it. Now let me talk a little bit about the shooting board, at least the construction of it. You'll notice on my shooting board, I have a little rabbit or a rebate, depending on where you live, that I put in. Frick, can you get this right where my finger is? And that little rebate runs right below the blade on the plane, so the plane's not cutting into the shooting board when I use it. There's a cleat out here in the front that catches the edge of the bench and the fence in the back. Now, the one thing you want to do when you're fastening that fence in, if you try to glue, you want to always use glue because that's the wood weld, right? If you try to uh, glue and screw it at the same time, it's going to twist on you and move, creep a little bit. So what I do is I put some glue on it, get a trusty square, put the plane in place, hold the two together for the length of one or two songs, and walk away, come back a half an hour later when the glue is set, then go ahead and put your screws in, and you're good to go. Other than that, there's not a whole lot. Oh yeah, the other thing, I, I keep the shooting board fence up here, away from the back end, and I'll show you when we do, I flip around and use my other shooting board, it's a little easier to show you exactly why. All right, I'm just gonna do these long sides. 
Put a little bit of wax on the side. Advance the blade. It's going to be fairly heavy cut for a bit until I get rid of those imperfections from the handsaw. As I said on our last piece, all we're really doing here is just using the shooting board to hold the uh, wood and the plane at right angles. I got a high spot here in the middle. I'm going to just wear away on that first. Now I've got an area right here that's low from the hand plane. So I'm going to get rid of that before I can this edge perfectly straight. A little bit hard to do this because I'm having to start with the plane sitting in mid-air so I've got to put a lot of pressure on that front part. The ideal if that shooting board was just two or three inches longer. I'm going to check my length on the width on this. Okay, we still got plenty. Alright, so that's the good and straight. And square. I'm just going to switch shooting boards. Put up the end. How are we for time, guys? We've got a couple minutes left? Uh, three minutes. Alright, let's square up this end. Cut my little chamfer first and flip it around so that I have my Actually, I did that backwards. Let me do that again. I'm going to uh, do this end. This is my reference face. I didn't mark it, so it's better now. And this is my reference edge. That's going to go against the fence. This is going to go down against the table. So that's the way I'm going to do it. But the first thing I have to do is cut a chamfer right here. So I'll flip this around. Cut my chamfer. Then put those two reference faces where they need to be. And just plain until... That chamfer is just about ready to disappear. That'll prevent tearing out fiber on that back side. Okay, that's good. Now, I can't do that one yet because I'm not going to be able to set my reference face down. So I'll do that next or down the road a little bit. Next thing I need to do is bring this into width. And this piece is going to be, these sides are three and a half inches. So I'm going to set my mark. Actually, I'm going to use my panel gauge on this. I'll introduce it. We'll have to pick this up in our next episode. But there's my panel gauge. I've got a cutter out here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this set to the three and a half inches that I want these sides to be. It's real easy to do. I've got a little wedge on the side. There's the three and a half inches. Put that wedge, just tap it in place, double check it. Okay, it's at three and a half inches. Just a little bit easier than a marking gauge because you've got more reference out here in the head. And then referencing off of this edge, I'm going to scribe a line right along there. Now if you want, you can run a pencil through that to make it a little easier to see, but I can see it fairly clear. And I'm going to get rid of a chunk of this with the scrub plane first before I take it to the shooting board, just because of the amount of stock that has to be removed. And the fact that it's the original rough sawn edge, which means there's going to be a bunch of dirt in there. And I don't want that taking the edge off my good plane. Keep an eye on that. Goes quickly. Okay. Now when we come back, we'll bring this down to width. We'll set our marking gauge, bring it down to thickness. Cut the two pieces in half. And uh, those two will be ready to go. It won't take us very long to do the ends at all. And in no time we'll be cutting dovetails in this. So we'll see you back episode number three. Four. Whichever. <laughs>